helpful um, ways to address some of these barriers. Um, just generally, trans leadership and recentering trans narratives. So not tokenizing people, allowing people to have the opportunity to both tell their own stories, but produce and direct and design for their own stories. And within that is also not allowing, not assuming that a play by a trans playwright or a play about a trans experience has to be about people's trauma with their gender. Um, that there is much more nuance and diversity in experience. Um, okay, it coming off, it's gonna be great. Um, the other thing that was talked about in terms of institutional um, is actually, oh, it should have been on this one. This is what happens when you try and hold and write at the same time. Um, casting policy. So um, an example that got brought up was Shakespeare, um, Santa Cruz, and like an intentional effort of being like, we're going to cast 50, acknowledging there isn't necessarily like a policy right now in terms of trans or gender non-conforming or non-binary folks, but a policy that does exist is a commitment to cast 50% women, 50% people of color, and what we talked about for strategies are what are strategies that people are already doing for equity that could be then um, targeted towards or engaged towards other populations. Um, Within that was also training staff to prepare with the con to engage with the content. So not just the artists that are going to be on stage, but your marketing folks, your box office folks, anybody that's going to have to talk about the work or engage with the public about the work. Um, and then another thing within the kind of um, is engaging trans arts organizations. So both like reaching out in terms of performers and designers and directors, but also advocating for them so they get the resources they need to do their own work. So it's a very, like, so it's a reciprocal relationship and not just being like, hey, give us your performers and we're not going to do anything back. And really developing a thriving arts ecosystem that supports more trans artists. <laughs> and within that is paying trans actors more than you pay non-trans actors. So one of the example was like, if you have one trans role every four years, you can afford to pay somebody a little bit more. Um, so that's what we had. Cool. Do you want to pass it on? Do you want help holding your giant whiteboard? Oh wait, one more. Sorry. No, there you go. Go, 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 go. Great. You should have a mic over there as well, or we can share. Um, so we had 30 minutes to have a really complicated uh, conversation. And uh, this board sort of reflects <laughs> the, the journey of that and that space. Um, so we actually are not going to go through each of the individual things. And we're going to ask for folks to come up here and engage with this, you know, as you're in the space today. The main things that Jack and I wanted to say, please feel free to jump in, Jack, are, you know, we talked, most of this work that we talked about is for allies. It's allies, work that allies need to do. We talked a lot about the internal work that we need from leadership. And then we talked a lot about um, more like external, systematic, cultural changes as well. And a lot of that is represented. This is for all the how, you know. To have a lot more time to talk about these things and create a plan of action. <laughs> it was good. It was really good. And I'm not sure how to summarize. It was good, so I'm just gonna speak from the heart. We need more spaces like this. I've never, like SK said, seen so many trans-identified folks in the arts or in theater, in the room together, that alone. Even the way we began was like, we could spend the whole 30 minutes just on the first part of the workshop, which is welcome welcoming each other, that we could be in that space. There were so many things that we could have shared and needed to, and just that alone, that we got to see each other and look at each other and rush and not have enough time. This messiness is our reality and the very embodied, manifested love that we've all come to share together. So I know that didn't like conceptually Summarize that, but it needed to be said. Yeah, beautiful, great. Um, so then we have one more share out from y'all. Is that true? The institutional. We can just put it up. Yeah, I think for time reasons. Okay, we for can put it up for people to respond to. <laughs> All right. So it's me and Jack. 
Um, great. So uh, I think I would love to just say thank you all for participating in these conversations and really engaging with this work. Uh, super grateful for every single person that is in the room um, and is at things. Say that again. Oh, sure. Um, we're about to break out into some, we'll take a half an hour break to have some wine and some food and folks who are coming just for the stage readings are going to join us as well and it might be a nice time to just take a breather. I don't know about you all, but this turtleneck is making me hot. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Lisa has some, I, for, for, you know, programs, some evaluations to pass out. If you have a second, please fill one out. This is definitely one of Cal Shake's civic dialogues and we're super grateful for their support. Um, and with that, I just encourage you all to keep the conversations going. Um, we have half an hour and we'll meet back here at six to see some art, some really cool art by some trans playwrights of color. Um, and we'll leave it at that. Thanks so much. Cheers.